Anadrol. Anadrol is a steroid and a prescription medication. First of all, don't use it without doctor supervision. This is not medical advice. This is for educational entertainment purposes only. Yep. I've used Anadrol. You've used Anadrol. Oh, yeah. You've used Anadrol. All of us have used Anadrol. We all have different opinions on this. But I want to hear what Amin's opinion is on how to use the, some people think, the most powerful oral steroid for bulking, Anadrol. Um, well, personally, I don't really think that you should take too much of it at once. I think whenever you take, for some people, that's 50 milligrams. Even though it comes in a 50 milligram tablet, builds up in your body. And even, you know, even though it's an oil, but if you take it every day, then you start to get side effects really quick. So, Oh, really? Yeah. What kind of side effects? Water retention is the biggest one. Liver, you get to also liver, all those things. But the oh, most really? obvious one... The most obvious one that you can see is the, the water retention in the face, and you can also notice it in the muscles. You get such a big pump that the muscles get so swollen, you, you know, you can't even finish the workout. I love all that. All that's great. I'm going to tell you what I experienced really quick. I experienced extreme high blood pressure. Oh, yeah. I feel like my internal pressure, like my body's going to explode. <laughs> on, the, on the good side, it, I feel full. And how pumped. many milligrams? Uh, 50 milligrams a day. And after, after how many days? After uh, maybe eight days. After eight days. Yeah. So that's the reason why I like to take Anadrol only two days in a row. Mm -hmm. if, if, I, if I take Anadrol, if I do it, I'll do it two days in a row, and then I'll take two days off, or I'll do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What's the life cycle of that Anadrol? The half-life half -life of it? Half-life? Mm -hmm. Eight hours? Eight hours, that's it? twelve. I personally think that even though I do it two two days on, two days off, I think during that two days, I think 25 milligrams every eight hours is the key. So that is more than 50 milligrams in a 24-hour period of time, but because you're not taking it all at once, you don't get those some of those nasty side effects, and before all the blood pressure and all that stuff creeps up on you, you've already stopped it for a couple of days. Now, I don't think you should just stop it and not do anything. I think you should you should take another oral substitute that doesn't give you blood pressure, doesn't do anything. My recommendation would be Anavar or oral Winstool or something like that. That's kind of the extreme opposite of what uh, Anadrol does. Yeah, totally Let, leveling out that you, you, now it's not a bulking drug, and now Winstool is not a cutting oh. cycle, but you're getting both of them at the same time, and it's not excessive with either one. So I think D ball, Diana ball, would be kind of the most similar to Anadrol as far as right, the benefits that, and side effects. But you don't think that's enough of a contrast to rotate between? Them? Right, because they're they're both highly androgenic, and both of them make you retain lots of water, and both of them are very much considered what you want to call off season bulking drugs because of the amount of minerals and the amount of water they make you retain. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, equal is <laughs> I love them both. I love your pizza. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm saying is that a drug like B ball or Anadrol or anything like that shouldn't be cycled every day. Instead of being cycled every day, it should be taken in alternation with another substance that doesn't have it. As much. You know, so that the water doesn't continually build up and build up and build up. Gosh. Because then that then it then it becomes an off season look and an off season drug. So if you take an off-season drug a couple times a week, you get huge off of it. You still stay hard. You you said to take something less anabolic, uh, androgenic, but but Winstrol is, and and ana, well, Winstrol is very androgenic. Yeah. Right? So are we using the right term? DHT androgenic. You mean anabolic. Winstrol is not very androgenic. It's it's a DHT derivative. It's very anabolic. More anabolic. Very anabolic. Very okay. low androgenic. That's why a lot of women use it. You know, because it's, it's low in it. androgen activity. I so we could take something you. like Anadrol uh, three days a week and Mint three days a week. Absolutely. That would be phenomenal. That, oh, would, that would be phenomenal. Uh, and that's how, you can get, that's how you can get great benefit from Anadrol without all the side effects. Some people get side effects from it no matter what, at any dosage. So every other day, that's what you're saying, if we're going to run I'm Anadrol? I'm two days. Either, either every other day and one day a week off, so that's, let's say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or... Two days on, two days off. And with men, you would, if you would do that, you do two days Anadrol, two days men, or you do Anadrol, men, Anadrol, men, Anadrol, men, off. So every eight hours, let's say you wake up at, at 6 a.m., you take one at 6 a.m. 25 milligrams. 25 milligrams at 6 a.m. Eight hours later is, like, I don't know, what is that, 3, 2, 2 p.m.? 
And then again at night before bed, yeah. 10 p.m. So yeah, three pills a day, 75 milligrams. Yeah, and actually, well, here's what happens. You get that the oh. first 50 milligrams you're taking during the day, so the effect of mineral retention and water retention and all that kind of happens. But the 25 milligrams you take at night, there's no glycogen, there's no water, there's none of that to be retained at night. So you wake up the next morning and you've got the red blood cell increase, the nitrogen balance was increased, all those things increased, but you don't have the water retention that you would have from like if you take lots of tests with lots of andro or lots of anadrol and D-ball with lots of sodium because there was no sodium during that eight hours. Right. So the first two, only 25 milligrams that you take, will it's going to be in you. So it's not like you need to take it before the workout. As long as it's in you, it's in you. Okay. okay. Two questions. One about taking it pre-workout. Second about ancillaries to go with it. What if I just want to take it before my workout every once in a while? Is that even worth doing? Anadrol, in my opinion, D-ball is better for that. In my opinion. Okay. And or Tranibol. Oral Tranibol is very good for that. Oh, we'll do a video on that because T-Ball, Tranibol is one that it, it, people don't talk about very much. But it's, so what I did, it's what I started my first steroid yeah. cycle with and we're going to talk about. But I also think that SARMs now replace T-Ball, Tranibol, which it, you're going to experiment it, it with. Is, it, it, from my understanding, it's 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 same They're kind They're very of, similar. Yeah, very similar, very similar type similar. substances. And, and you know what? They're both underrated. Tyrannibol is underrated, SARMs are underrated, people have a better understanding on the proper dosage and administration of these stuff, which I'm going to dive into personally. Personally, finding out the right way to take this. There isn't enough experiment behind it. We know what it does, we know what pathways and what channels it does, but we don't necessarily have a perfected way of dosing it and taking it. So I'm going to work on that and then get, to, get back to the, the best way of doing it, and we still want to incorporate it where we don't get too much of a resistance yeah. tolerance to it. Yeah, and this is bro science because it has to be bro science because there's no medical, yeah, there you're never going to do medical studies on how to use anadrol to build the most amount of muscle. So if you guys want to see and follow our, our personal experiments with all these compounds where we tell you everything, then subscribe, like, and comment in the video below what else you want to see. Ancillaries. Ancillaries means things you run along with the main okay. substance. That's, That's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah, things <laughs> take, things take dictionary together. Dictionary version. Right. <laughs> Learn some new term terminology. Uh, to oh, run water talk. Yeah. <laughs> so hell is smart when I'm talking about buddies. So man, what kind of ancillaries are you running with your D-ball? What? <laughs> what? What you running with it? What else? Go ahead. So uh, what? What would you run with Anadrol? We. I mean, it does aromatize, right? Yeah, exactly. You just said it. We're already talking about it taking men and androl together, so we would do the letrozole. We would have to do some sort of anti-estrogen to keep things under control. But because we're not taking androl every day, which will build up progesterone and estrogen and all those other things, you're not going to have the. You're not going to have to take as much as you would in a cycle. Mm. Okay, so especially if we because mint aromatizes right. more than anything. Anadrol aromatizes, but if you were switching between an anadrol and an anavar, or an anadrol and a winstrol, neither of those other two aromatize, then you'd need a lot less of an aromatase inhibitor. Right, or even uh, anavar or winstrol and mint and SARS. Either that too. You can do that also. It doesn't have to be the anadrol and the D-ball because you already have the ment which aromatizes, so you can do that with Anabar or that with Winstrol. So we could actually do, God, if we wanted to do an oral-only cycle, we could do anadrol three days a week and SARMs three or four days a week. And, and it's, I mean, honestly, that's, but the, you're not going to hurt your liver like that. I, and, and you're not going to get immune to the effects. You're not. And, it's going to and you're not going to have the side effects. You're, and, it's going to, and the thing is, it's going to continually work as good as it did as if it was the first time you took it. That's what you want. You don't want to have to build up a tolerance to the point where you're taking 50 milligrams every eight hours and you have to do it for it and then take 200 milligrams. You know, that's... But traditional cycle theory is that you have to take something for eight weeks or six weeks, and it really starts working three or four weeks. So we've told ourselves to believe this, but the reality is when you understand the chem pharmacology behind the drug, the drug creates an effect for a certain amount of hours, the half-life, the substances in your body. That's, that's period. So if you think you have to accumulate that up, that's in your own mind. It's not true. But if you have a substance that can, can uh, has an effect for eight hours, and then another substance to continue on where that was for eight hours, then the only thing that changes would be the level of anabolic, the level of androgen, the level of converting, but you're still going to be anabolic. You're still going to have a positive nitrogen level. You so overly simplify, if we have a muscle cell, 
and we're not talking in this video about growth hormone or insulin or IGF, so we're not talking about, uh, what is it, hyperplasia, where you create right. new muscle cells. We're talking about hypertrophy, where Mitosis. you're growing new, uh, I mean, where you're growing a muscle cell that already exists. Right. That's what most anabolic steroids is, just make the muscle cells you have. Increase the size. Increase the, cells the cells size. Right. Not create so more cells. So if we're ramping up this, this muscle cell to grow in size, I mean, the, the way I, I used to think about the theory was, we're going to start taking a drug, and it's going to start triggering things in the cell, and it's going to take time for those cells to actually like grow well, and respond. What it is, I think, too, also, more than take, 48 hours. you take something, you know, say it'll increase red blood cells over time, correct? Mm -hmm. You're not going to produce all these red blood cells instantly within a four-hour period of a half-life of a drug or six hours. That is also a cumulative effect, the red blood cells. So there are little things like that that doesn't happen in four hours. It takes a long time for that hormone to get released, mm -hmm. to tell your body to create these, and then it takes X amount of time to produce X amount of blood cells for that to happen. That's so we'll call that like a secondary which, benefit. Yeah, a secondary, but it also builds up as a side effect. Too. Right, and so that by taking it three days a week or two days on, two days off, you reduce that, you're, you could take it longer because your body doesn't have all this, you know, producing red blood cells so much and so much and so much that it decides to counteract it and build a tolerance to it so it doesn't do that. Normally people would take anadrol for six weeks because yeah. of liver toxicity and side effects and because it stops working as well. That's right. That's if, why they increase the dose. If we, if we take it the way that you're prescribing here, how long can we do an anadrol cycle for? Well, if you take one day off a week, and if you do check your blood, one day, your that's one day off everything you're saying. One day off because because three week. days of anadrol and one day off everything per week. Right? Well, yeah, but that is unless you're doing growth hormone for anti aging, and then you would just take it at night. But then we talked about the secretagog would take you the replace of any injection. So other than secretagog, yes, one day off of everything. So the anadrol never gets accumulated in the body so that you get a, a, a tolerance. So as long as you're healthy, you can keep doing <laughs> We can just take Anadrol all but, year. But see, that's what I'm saying. The <laughs> cycle and it's cruising. Not the, 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 different, the difference is, oh is now God. post <laughs> post this <laughs> era, <laughs> post this era, it, there was there was nothing called cruising. It was just a it was like a down cycle and then an up cycle, and then they became cruising, and then cruising got so much that cruising became cycling. Mm -hmm. And then cycling became something that was just ridiculous. It's, extreme. it's just so extreme. What I'm saying is, is that there's there's a way to take substances where it's not a cycle. You're, you're just taking advantage of the substances for the period of time that they're in your body. Yep. Therefore, you're getting the, the positive effects of nitric balance and all that. And, you know, Cumulatively, maybe over a few months, you're getting enough with androl enough red blood cell count. That it's not excessive, but it's to your advantage. Versus the opposite, which is I got to take more to get less results. I think the biggest take-home message to all of it is all these things are going to build muscle, aside from a couple of the same <laughs> at the same rate. Oh my God, <laughs> it's going to all these all these hormones build muscle relatively at the same rate. So it's how to take them. And build muscle without side effects. Exactly, with, with the least amount of water and all yeah. the undesirable effects that yeah. you want. Rocking my world. I know, me too, dude. I so, so I gotta tell you, Trevor's really. I've been doing this for a long time. He's a young, he's young, you know. And, and a lot of people that may have seen this, including myself, before I met these guys, which was just recently. Uh, you know, you you listen to Trevor, and you 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 think he knows a lot. You know, he does know a lot. His, his, the way he can deductively reason the same stuff that I do, when you're on the same path, it seems like like-minded people think the same. So I would put it out there that Trevor and I are like-minded individuals when it comes to this. And I think that that says a lot about the way he comes to a conclusion, the way I come to a conclusion. It, the, the, the conclusions are the same. I'm really excited about this new cycle. We're going to call it a cycle theory. We you should. Yeah, because there's no other theory. way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's theory, right. But um, I want to put some of this stuff into play. Bishop's deciding on which route he wants to go to take his physique to the next level. Sounds like we're in a professional it. circuit. Right. Uh, I'm thinking about combining and cycling between uh, YK11, I'm gonna do Anadrol, that for and sure. Ment, and, right. and seeing if I can do this in a healthy way, getting my liver tested. Of course, I'm going to be traveling a lot. Trevor and I have some uh, more Asia 
trips coming up pretty soon <laughs> in Mexico. Uh, so if you guys want to see that, hey, you know what? I'll, I also want to know is how much of my lifestyle do you want to see? Because um, I initially started showing my lifestyle because you guys kept requesting it. And then I threw in some ladyboy stuff, and a lot of people got, <laughs> think I took it a little bit too far. So it's up to you guys. Whatever you want to see, I'm a freaking open book. I would have a camera on me 24-7. I have nothing to hide. I hope that you guys can learn from He's my He's not experience. lying. He's doing this to me right now. <laughs> if you're around me, if you hang out with me, you're going to have a camera on you. are going to have a camera on you. <laughs> In the bathroom, right? <laughs> you, you miss most of the good stuff, too. We oh. wish we would have a camera because he says uh, some ridiculous yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, been a of, it's been a lot of fun the past few years. It really has. Well, plenty more to come. Yeah. Right. So, subscribe, like, be swallowed and swole, my friends of freedom. Pioneers of human.